this is Aria. And this is Hannah. Bringing you this week's fighting game news. The big event was, of course, Capcom Cup 9. But first, a few little tidbits. In Multiverses, Player First Games publishes patch notes for the Valentinian event. With this update comes a Valentine's Day themed event with some cosmetic items as well as some tweaks and balance changes for some of the heroes. This event includes 30 days of login rewards and a silly Q game mode called Heartbreaker Mode. Samurai Showdown 3 is one of the less iconic entries in the franchise. Nonetheless, it's now available for mobile devices, both on iOS and Android, as SNK continues to re-release classic arcade titles on smartphones and tablets. This version is fairly standard and doesn't contain any visual or gameplay updates, but of course, there's adapted touch controls with customization, a quick save or load function, support for Bluetooth gamepads, and online features such as ranking modes. At only $3.99, it's not a bad way to spend a bit of pocket change if you're looking to play some Samurai Showdown on the go. With their recent patch, Brahalla introduces a new challenge for their most dedicated and skilled players. In their new difficulty mode for Horde, Nightmare Horde provides a significant increase of difficulty in making waves of gargoyles even more terrifying to fight. This and their other game modes are available for custom lobbies and offline play. And now on to the big news of the past week, Capcom Cup 9. First up, team results. The Good 8 squad, consisting of Gachikun, Pugera, Kawano, and Dogura, emerged as the Street Fighter League World Champions after a riveting finale against Team UYU. The Japanese champions were pitted against the best from Europe and the USA and came through it with a great victory. More on the finals, UIU won the first set before Good 8 Squad won the second. It was down to the wire, with none other than Kawano taking the whole thing for his team, defeating Korea's NL in the final match. The winning team walked away with a cool $80,000, so big congratulations to the Good 8 Squad. And now on to singles results. Chris T went to Twitter explaining what happened, expressing his regret for not being able to make it. This, of course, highlights one of the biggest problems facing semi-pro players, which is scheduling. However, a relatively unknown player from China, Jen, was the winner of the LCQ, defeating Japan's Kichipa 3-1 to take his place as the 47th player. The LCQ was considered by many as the most difficult tournament to win because it pits so many killer players together in a ruthless bracket format. Unlike the group stages where perhaps you could lose a couple of games and still make it through, two defeats in the LCQ meant you were out. The group stages themselves were also full of upsets and unexpected results, such as Punk, Big Bird, and Oil King being knocked out of the tournament before top 16. The Dark Horse Zen also came out top of his group, showing his incredible knack for adaptability and downloading his opponent by beating Momochi. In terms of highlights, the match between Mortsi and Mono was of particular interest because it introduced something very rare indeed, a Fung mirror match. Mono is widely considered as the best Fung in the world, but today that title might be called into question as he lost the set to Mortsi. The set itself was very fun to watch, with thick plumes of purple poison covering the entire screen, which provided some great entertainment for the fans. And finally, on to top 16. Zen's domination of the LCQ continued here, beating Kawano, Angry Bird, and Idom in convincing fashion. However, there was one opponent that he couldn't beat, and that was Mena RD. Mena had been in fine form all week, taking first place in his group with the likes of Pigura, Micron, Jimmy, and Samurai. He was dominant all through top 16 and top 8, taking down names like Ending Walker and defeating the Dark Horse Zen twice to win the coveted trophy. Mena RD takes home the $120,000 grand prize and now has the distinct honor of being the first ever player to win Capcom Cup twice. It's even more remarkable that he did it with the same game, thus cementing himself as perhaps the greatest Street Fighter V player of all time. And whilst we didn't get any updates for Street Fighter VI, it was confirmed that it would be the main game for Capcom Cup 10 and that the prize pool would be an unprecedented $2 million. This kind of money is simply unheard of until now in the world of fighting games, 
and along with everything else we've seen for Street Fighter VI, makes us all the more excited. It's a real statement of intent from Capcom. And that's it for this week's fighting game news. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent day all, and stay tuned for more news.